Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another manifestation series video. This one is going to be for all my people out here trying to manifest love into your life, trying to manifest a relationship. Uh, I'm going to kind of sit here and chat to you, with you about how I personally managed to manifest a relationship. I'm even gonna tell you where I went wrong, hindsight. 2020. So I see the sort of, as I've gone perfecting my manifestation techniques, I kind of see how I was able to manifest said relationship and um, kind of what I should have done to keep it or where I kind of went wrong. Um, so I'm hoping that this gives you some kind of insight. I'm hoping that you can leave this video with a couple new practices and techniques. And my intention is that you see this and you manifest that love into your life or just more options, you know, all the things. But anyways, everything that we're talking about in this video, I go more in depth in my Revise Your Mindset course. It's essentially... I created this course after having manifested this relationship whilst being in the relationship. So it's kind of a step-by-step -step process. It's about revising your mindset, your relationship to self, to love and money. So there's a couple techniques that I use or practices that I use uh, with money in order to manifest love, um, which can be really fun. But if you wanna check that course out, it's basically a go at your own pace video library um, there's exercises that kind of take you through the steps. It is going to be on sale for the next week. Um, so be sure to snag that once you get in, you're in. Um, and you can revisit it at any time. If I add any videos, you can join the Facebook group uh, that is included, asking questions, receiving support from me um, if you are asking questions over there. So be sure to check that out, okay? Because it's gonna be on sale for the next week. But let's dive in, let's talk about what I did specifically in order to call in that relationship. So a little bit of backstory. I feel like I had gone through, before, before I really like hunkered down and it was like, okay, we're going to work on manifesting like the love that we want. I feel like I was kind of moving through blind or like operating from like, trauma systems um, or operating from like discomfort, like where I kind of didn't ever feel safe in relationships, not safe to be vulnerable, not safe to express myself or not safe to like be myself or be comfortable in the environment of like somebody being present, right? Somebody being present with me or somebody being with me a lot of times. I was probably like way more of an avoidant be, I had like way more avoidant behavior, which is funny because then I shifted into like anxious behavior. But I think before I had like way more of an avoidant attachment style um, where I was like, ooh, feelings. And I'd keep things really casual, even though deep down I wanted a relationship. I'd be like um, settling for like casual situations just because I felt uncomfortable. I didn't feel safe in uh, relationships. So I would manifest like a lot of like third party situations where it's like somebody else is being chosen over me or like this person is emotionally unavailable. And um, like I'd have these connections that would be very short lived, you know, because I wasn't, you know, taking accountability for like me creating my own reality. I wasn't fully emotionally available, you know? So I decided we're gonna change this. So even part of my course, it's like a th the first process is like a three-step process. It's like identifying your desire, identifying the blockage. So like when I identified the blockage, I'm like, why am I, I not feel safe being seen in a relationship? So once I started diving into that, Step three is like, I call it like the lock-in process, the lock in your manifestation. And the lock-in process is um, essentially you're creating a practice or a ritual to get yourself comfortable in the energy of what you're trying to call in, you know? So 
my lock, once I had like identified, okay, what is the blockage here? And the blockage is most often, like I don't feel comfortable um, being seen, being vulnerable or being like with somebody all the time, you know? So what I did, what I started doing, and this is like another lesson in the course. So it, even if you don't wanna take the course, I do have a workbook, which is significantly cheaper that it's taken directly from the course, but I would say take advantage of the course being on sale just because, you know, I will add more to it or host things through that. So um, anyways, once I created like this lock-in process, I started really kind of living in my imagination and being like a little bit delusional. And this can work whether you're trying to manifest a specific person or just a person in general. Um, and I almost like, even if you are trying to manifest a specific person, I almost like the, the idea of just living in this, like not putting a face to the, th to the manifestation and kind of letting the universe show up for you. Um, and you know, I had always done the things where I create the list of the man that I want, right? Uh, but I really switched up the game when I was like, okay, become the man of your dreams, you know? Um, instead of looking for that externally, become it. Become it. So part of my lock-in practice was very delusional. So if you are planning to follow this, prepare to be delusional. But like I would do things like I'd go on walks and I'd pretend like I, I, I would decide like, man, this is something that I would really like to do with a partner like or with a, a, a boyfriend. So I would go on walks and I'd like in my imagination pretend like I was walking with somebody, you know, I would uh, kind of like role play with myself. And that's what I talk about in my course as well, is like I would role play with money as well, where money is my boyfriend. So every time I'm buying something for myself, it's like um, my boyfriend's buying it for me. Or like we go to the grocery store and he's like, get whatever you want. Uh, or like whatever rituals you want to add into it, you know? Uh, but I would role play like around the house where I'd be like, okay, I'm going to make these recipes or cook and I'd kind of decided be like, am I cooking for him? So if I would sit there, I'd be like me cooking and then I'd serve it to him, which was still me. <laughs> and I'd like enjoy it and eat it. And I'd sit there and be like on a little date with myself. And um, or, or sometimes I'd switch, I'd be him cooking it. <laughs> so delusional but it was so effective and I'll tell you why I would be him cooking it and then when I'd sit I'd eat it and I'd be in like this energy of gratitude like oh my gosh my man just made me breakfast like things like that or I'd really just I'd really just let myself kind of be in this fantasy and meanwhile this was like during COVID times so I had a lot of time on my hands I had a lot of time to be in my imagination and fantasy um, because by 2021, I had like called in that relationship. Um, but I, I definitely, I feel like what this did for me, what this did for me and why it was so effective, because I'm going to give you like the logical explanation. Why this was so effective was because I started getting really comfortable in the energy of like even envisioning like somebody was around me all the time. Somebody was around me, seeing me in my true form, seeing me be vulnerable, seeing me like in the mornings making breakfast for me or me making cooking for them. And like I was essentially doing this for myself. So not only had I strengthened my relationship with myself, where I am like I'm worthy of being in a relationship who with somebody who's like fully attentive and devoted to me and wants to spend time with me but because I'm in a relationship with myself and it felt so good. I was like, God, I, I kind of had, by the time I started dating, uh, like actually putting myself out there and dating, I wasn't settling for whatever, you know? Uh, granted, granted, you know? Uh, because I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into how I screwed it up too. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, already in this, I had been dating myself for a year, like 
eight months. I'd been dating myself for eight months and I was like, man, it's so fun to date me. Like my mindset, I had built like the self-concept of like, it's so nice to date me. It's so fun to date me. It's so fun, like going on walks with me, you know? And it was because I was dating myself. I was dating myself. So I got the firsthand experience of what it was like to date myself, you know? Even with the money, like that's where I kind of developed this concept of money loves me. Money loves me. And I always say that. I'm like, money loves me. Like money adores me. Money's obsessed with me. And I would personify money as well. I talk about that in the course. Um, but I do, like I, I had spent eight months dating myself. So I was kind of like, I knew what I was bringing to the table, metaphorically speaking. So by the time I started dating, I felt really comfortable and I felt really ready. And it was ready to the point where I wasn't, I wasn't in an energy, I don't wanna say I was in an energy of chasing, but I also wasn't like sitting idly. I was like, I want that, I'm gonna go get it, you know? So it was like, you know, we're in the modern era, era of, um, we're in the modern era, oh my God, we're in the modern era of like online dating, women make the first move, you know, if you're on Bumble or whatever. Um, so I really was kind of in this energy of readiness where I wasn't really listening to like the, if he wanted to, he would, or if they wanted to, they would. I was just like very confident in like, I'm like a really fun person to be around. I'm like a really fun person to date. Like I've been dating myself for eight months. Who wouldn't want to be in this environment that I've created? So I was kind of like, not concerned like if I wanted to hang out with somebody I'd be like hey do you want to hang out and then it was like I was kind of letting this person into my world and when this per when the person came along that I was like that's the one like that's who I want that's who I've been manifesting it happened uh, I don't want to say it happened easily because again, this is where I started to, this is where like in hindsight, I learned a lot from that relationship because I learned a lot about like, that's where I think I shifted into the anxious mindset because I was like, oh my God, now that I have this, I manifested it. I don't want to lose it. So I kind of moved into this anxious attachment where it was like scarcity mindset instead of continuing on my flow of like I'm so fun to date I'm so carefree who wouldn't want to be with me and like working on my self-concept I kind of placed all of this on this person but the beautiful thing was I think I healed a lot I healed a lot of my like trauma in that relationship where it was like not being chosen but a lot of these old paradigms and old stories were playing out within the beginning of that relationship. But I think like the beautiful thing was we would go on walks together and it was like, we would cook for one another. We would alternate, like I'd cook for him, he'd cook for me. And it was kind of like my delusions coming to life. And this person in my life um, who kind of was a representation of what I had been looking for and what I needed at the time. But I think where I went wrong was instead of like continuing with my self-concept and continuing to like first and foremost prioritize myself, date myself through this process, I looked at it like scarcity. I looked at it like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to like, this is it. Like I, I, I found the person and I clung to like, this is it. Um, there's nothing else out there for me. I don't want anything else. Um, and I, I, I put a lot of emphasis, I put this person kind of on a pedestal. And I think in hindsight, like, you know, as you're, as I'm like back to the drawing board manifesting again, it's taking that person off the pedestal and kind of getting back to the dating me, kind of getting back to the dating me. And it's like even better this time because I'm like, oh, I, I, I learned so much from that situation where it's like, okay, I'm never going to put somebody else on a pedestal again. I'm never going to place my happiness um, on somebody like that pressure of like, it has to be this person or look at scarcity mindset, like things that I've shifted that I'm still in the process of like dating myself, falling back in love with myself, um, putting myself on the pedestal, like making myself the priority. I am always chosen. I'm prioritized. I'm pursued. 
Um, but that's because I'm doing that for me, you know? So I think that in hindsight, but not hindsight because I'm actively doing this right now, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll use even affirmations where I'm like, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, I'm always approached by hot eligible bachelors. And it's like training your subconscious and whether you're male or female, just change the gender. I'm talking my experience because I am, you know, looking for a man. Um, but I, I'll do that. And it like trains my subconscious to see options. I think a lot of, at least myself personally in the past, and I think a lot of women were trained to like see so many beautiful women. Like there's beautiful women everywhere. And there's like this surplus of women, if that's your belief. Um, or that's the assumption that you're making. And that's when we get in relationships and we're like, oh my gosh, but why wouldn't he be focused like, like on this, there's so many beautiful women. And I kind of got to a point where I'm like, screw that. There's so many attractive, eligible men out there. Like if anybody should be worried, it should be them sitting there stressing, like what if they find somebody better, you know? And, and sometimes that is like the fear. That is the fear that's going on opposite of you that you can't even see because you're so focused on like, well, what if they find somebody better than me? And that's where the assumption comes in. Like there is nobody better than me. And that's not like a egotistical or narcissistic thing. It's that I have a lot of options, you know? And that's training your subconscious every day to see all the options. Once I started making that, um, first I just started saying everywhere I go, there's hot eligible men. And I started going places and I'd see all these like good looking guys or like these like guys walking their dogs like you know it'd be like <laughs> the hot eligible men and I'm like okay my subconscious is now recognizing it but then I was like okay well let's switch it up to everywhere I go I'm approached by hot eligible men um but that's kind of where you're moving into and I feel like in terms of manifesting a relationship and keeping the relationship, it's definitely like you want to, you want to first identify like what it is, what's your end goal? Are you ready to get married? Are you ready to move in with a person? So jump to that end, jump to that end, start training yourself to live in that end. So it's like, if I want a serious commitment with somebody who I want to move in with me, I'm going to train myself already to get comfortable in that energy. Like it's like, what's their schedule if they come home at five o'clock what am I doing at five o'clock you know and like if I'm sitting there like a slouch like a like slouch on the couch it rhymed and I didn't even try uh, <laughs> I tried to not rhyme but if you're sitting there like a slob on the couch or whatever it's not a bad thing but feel what it would feel like if somebody's coming home Feel what it would feel like if somebody's coming home. Like, are you still going to be in that energy? Or like, do you need to get comfortable, like pretend somebody's home and they're like, oh, like I'm going to get on the couch with you now, you know, like little things that you can live in your delusions. And I'm telling you, it manifests. It manifests because I did that. And it took me like probably eight months on and off where I was like, I'm over this. Um, but then I'd get back into it. And then when I fully was totally ready, I knew it in my being and I manifested, like I manifested the walks, like this person who would go on walks with me. I manifested the, the, all the little day things. And I, it was like the first time I really, really felt comfortable to just let go and be myself. But because I had trained my subconscious to get comfortable in the energy of somebody being around me, and it's even like, you know, moving out of that relationship into new ones, I still have that. I still have that comfortability because it was me. It was me who created the environment. Um, and that's kind of taking that person off the pedestal and realizing like it was me the whole time. Like that person was just reflecting me and my energy. So of course they got comfortable in my energy because I created the comfortable environment, you know? So you can recreate that for whoever, whoever you wanna call in. And if you're in the process of like starting to date somebody and you're like manifesting specific person, 
um, or you're wanting to manifest an ex back, whatever, it's doing the same thing, but also working on your own self-concept, falling in love with yourself to the point, putting yourself on the pedestal, you know, that, that whatever's external to you has no option but to do the same, to reflect back to you that love and care, like, especially if you're saying like, I'm always chosen, then if you're always chosen, if you're embodying the state of always being chosen, you're not gonna stress out about who else they're talking to, about who else they're, you know, desiring to be with because you're always chosen. You're always prioritized, you're always pursued. And if you can really live in that, then the world has nothing to reflect back to you but that. And like, you won't even give energy and attention to situations in which you aren't chosen or you aren't prioritized and pursued, that's not gonna exist in your reality. That's not gonna even feel comfortable for you anymore because it's you've shifted into the new paradigm, the new story. So um, this is like little tidbits of information. I don't wanna make this video too long, but I hope that this resonated and I hope that you can take this, use this, go manifest the love that you want. If you want in on my course, it's gonna be on sale. Um, for the next week, $99, and you get like a bunch of videos, a bunch of lessons, uh, support, Facebook support group. So come on in and let's help manifest you some love. All right, I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.